Shabbat Shalom. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Shabbat morning service, where, among other things, we will celebrate Aiden Deutschman becoming a Bar Mitzvah this morning. I want to invite you all to sing along, participate in the service. It's so much more joyful when, even if we can't hear each other, if we all sing together. We'll start with something very easy. The words go like this. Shalom, everyone, and good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning as we celebrate Aiden becoming Bar Mitzvah. We are so happy to be with all of you. I am Rabbi Emily Hyatt. This is Steve Brodsky. I think he's this way. Uh, uh, <laughs> you never know on Zoom. Um, he is our cantorial soloist and musical director. I think below him you see the Deutschman family. Um, and we are so excited to have everyone with us this morning. We. This is when I would tell you if we were all in the same space to turn off your cell phones but quite frankly you can do what you want with your cell phone because you're at home but here's what I will tell you if you are joining us on Facebook drop us a note the Deutschman family will be able to check in on that later and read everything that you say um, wishing Aiden and the whole family congratulations if you're with us on the website feel free to turn up the volume sing along join us we're very excited now my job this morning as we begin is to help you all get warmed up so that in a moment Aiden can come back and lead us in prayer. But first, we begin this service the way that we begin every service in Jewish tradition, by taking a moment for gratitude, for recognizing how blessed and how lucky we are, even in this crazy and very strange world, to be able to gather together to pray that we have bodies, spirits, and minds that allow us to do that. We begin by thanking God for our physical selves. Join with me. My God, I thank you for my life, body, and soul. Help me to realize that I am someone new, someone who never existed before, someone unique and original in the world. May I be fully present to this awesome day. May my body and my soul be ready to do your work unifying and strengthening one another, linked and renewed daily by your breath. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rofecho Basar Umafli Asot. Blessed are you, Adonai, who heals all flesh, working wondrously. So we give thanks for our bodies, recognizing that we are physical beings. 
We also give thanks first thing in the morning for our souls. Elohai nishama shenatata bi. God, the soul that you have given me is a pure one. We are also spiritual beings and we take a moment to recognize that. said thank you for our bodies thank you for our spirits and souls and now we thank god for our minds for the ability to think and to learn and so in a moment we're going to say the blessing over the reading and study of torah which we are going to do shortly um, as we make our way through the service so let's read this blessing together as we prepare to open our minds baruch ata adonai eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidshanu ba mitzvota vitzivanu la asok bedivre Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to engage with words of Torah. And as we come to the end of this Birchot Hashachar section of our service, the morning blessings, our sort of welcome and warm up section. We sing the words of Psalm 150, and this, this one word in particular, hallelujah, praise to God. feeling warmed up. I am feeling quite grateful, in fact, for the ability to be here with all of my body working and functional with my spirit, with my mind, and with Aiden and his family. And so with that, it is my great pleasure to call to the screen Aiden and the rest of the fam 
to lead us in prayer. We rise as we are able, either physically or spiritually, for the Baruch our call to worship. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Yotzer or Uvore Choshech, Ose Shalom Uvore et Hakol, Hameir La Aretz Valadarim Alecha Barachamim, Uvtuvo Mechadesh Bechol Yom Tamid, Maase Vereshit, Ma Rabu Maasecha Adonai, Kulam Bechochma Asita, Mala Haaretz Kinya Necha. Tit barach Adonai Eloheinu, al shevach ma'ase yadecha ve'al me'ore or she'asita yefa'arucha sela, or chadash al tzion ta'ir ke chulanu mecheira le'oro, baruch ata Adonai, yotzer ha'me'orot. God, inspiration and guide for all, you have spoken in a thousand tongues for us to hear in every land and every age. Your children have heard you and imagined you in separate ways. And yet, O oh God, you are one unifier of humanity. We give thanks for the sages and teachers who bring us understanding of your will. Gratefully, we recall the lawgivers and prophets, the psalmists and sagists of Israel. And joyfully, we remember that from the dawn of Israel's life, we would turn to you and find purpose. May the teachings of our ancestors live in our minds and their passion for righteousness stir our hearts. Help us to live so that our daily conduct reveals the beauty and wisdom of your truth. Baruch ata Adonai, chabocher be'amo Yisrael ba'ahava.
may be seated. Please join me in chanting Vehavta. Vehavta et Adonai Elochecha, Bechol Vavcha, Uvchol Nafshecha, Uvchol Meodecha, Vehayu Hadvarim Haele, Asher Anochi Metzavecha, Hayom Alevavecha. Veshinan tam levanecha, veri bartabam, beshiv techa bave techa, uv lech techa va derech, uv shoch becha uv kumecha, uk shartam leod al yadecha, vehayula totafod bene necha, uch tav tam al mezuzot be techa, uvi sharecha, leman tis keru. Vaasitem et kol mitzvotai, vihitem kedoshim lelohehem. Ani Adonai elohehem, asher chotzeit yatchem, meeretz mitzrayim, liot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai elohehem. Sing the song of men and women, joined in the understanding and respect the song of God's miracles, an earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come, the song of a land once ravished by war, now quiet and content, her soldiers home to leave no more, the song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. I now invite Steve Brodsky to the screen to lead us in Micha Mocha. of Israel, rise in support of Israel and redeem Judah and Israel as you promised. Our Redeemer, Adonai Tzavaot, is your name. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ga'al Yisrael, blessed are you Adonai, who redeems Israel. We continue with the tefillah. Please rise as you are able, either physically or spiritually. Adonai sefatai tivtach ufi agite hilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu velohe avotinu vimoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, ve Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, ve Elohe Lea, Ha El Hagado, Hagibor, ve Hanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, ve Kone Hako, 
Vezocher chaste avot v'imahot, umevi geula livnei v'neihem, lemaan shemo be'ahava. Melech ozer umoshia umagin, baruch ata Adonai, magin Avraham vezrat sara. Atagi bor le'olam Adonai, mechayea kol atarav lehoshia. Mashiv haruach umorid hagashem, mechalkel chayim bechesed. Mechaye ha kol berachamim rabim, so mech noflim verofe cholim. Umatir asurim, umekaye memunato, lishene afar, micha mocha baal gevurot, umidomelach. Melech memi to mechaye, umat miach yeshua, venemana talechayot ha kol, baruchata adonai, mechaye ha kol. Nekadesh et shimcha baolam. Keshem shemakti shimo tobi shme marom kakatu val yad ni viecha vekara zel zeve amar kadosh 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 adonai tsevaot melo kol haaretz kevodo Adir Adirenu Adonai Adonainu Ma Adir Shimcha Bechol Haaretz Baruch Kevod Adonai Mimkomo Echad Hu Eloheinu Hu Avinu Hu Malkeinu Hu Moshienu Vehu Yashmienu Brachamav le'nei kol chai. Ani Adonai Eloheim. Yimloch Adonai le'olam. Eloha yichtzion. Le'dor v'ador. Le dor va dor, 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 le dor Veshiv chacha Eloheinu mihipinu lo yamush, leolam, leolam vaed. To all generations, we will declare your greatness, and for all eternity, proclaim your holiness. Your praise, O God, shall never depart from our lips. Blessed are you, Adonai, the Holy Sovereign. Baruch Adonai. Ha'el HaKadosh. Aiden, that was fabulous and beautiful. And with all of the holiness that you have just given us, leading us in prayer, we take a moment now to pray silently the prayers in our hearts and minds, and we come back together in just a moment.
shalom bim roma u ya se shalom ale beautiful prayer we have had so far this morning. We arrive now at our Torah service. And before we begin to do our, um, our, our reading from the Torah, to call Aiden, to have this moment of, of seeing him and hearing him read from the Torah and learning from him, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, our Torahs that we have at Temple Emmanuel and why they're so important to us. Uh, if we were all together, I would take out of the ark where we store our Torah scrolls, at this moment, a Torah that came from the city of Kolin in Czechoslovakia. Now, Kolin, um, the, for the country formerly known as Czechoslovakia, Kolin has, we have a history of Jewish people living in Kolin all the way back to about the 1400s. And the history of those people is very much like the history in so many other European cities. Sometimes things were good and really um, comfortable and safe and, uh, and Jewish people thrived. And some peop sometimes things were less good, if you will. Um, and all of that really changed in 1939. 1939 is when the Nazis and Hitler reached the border of Czechoslovakia during World War II. When that happened, the Jews began to lose some of the rights that they had had as citizens of Czechoslovakia. First, they lost the right to things like um, certain jobs or certain positions or certain social opportunities. And then they lost the, the rights to um, some more serious things like health care and education and then food and housing and uh, the basic right to live as we know and everything really reached a boiling point in 1942 that is when hitler and the nazis reached the city of colleen when that happened two things happened the first is that um hitler was building a museum in czechoslovakia and um it was a museum that was not the kind of museum that we go to where we pay respect and honor to the things that we see and learn about it was the kind of museum that was going to be a tribute to this people that the nazis had been able to wipe out that was their goal and so as hitler was making his way through uh europe he was collecting 
things from the Jewish communities that he decimated. So all of the Judaica and ritual objects and Torah scrolls and even the furniture um, from these synagogues was being sent to warehouses. One that um, is relevant to us was in Prague and things were being so stored in these warehouses until these museums or this museum could be built. That's the first thing that happened is that all of the ritual objects, the Judaica, the Torah scrolls um, from the synagogue in Colleen were packed up and were set to be shipped to Prague to be stored. <clears throat> the second thing that happened is that all of the people who lived in, all of the Jewish people who lived in Colleen and in the surrounding towns were also sent away to concentration camps. Now, our numbers are not great. We don't have exact numbers here, but as far as we know, there were a about um, 420-ish, um, uh, 400 ish people that Jewish people that were living in Colleen proper and maybe another 2000 ish that were living in the small surrounding towns um, near to Colleen. Colleen was their biggest near city. Every single one of them was sent to a concentration camp. And at the end of the war, as best we know, there were 16 survivors. Now, interestingly, all of that furniture, the ritual objects, the Judaica that got packed up and was set to be sent to Prague to be stored, never made it to Prague. We're not sure exactly what happened, but somehow it was smuggled out of Czechoslovakia and it ended up in the basement of a synagogue in Zurich. And that is where it lived until the 80s when our Rabbi Emeritus here at Temple Emmanuel, Rabbi Stephen Foster, was in the process of designing our new chapel. And he happened to see an ad in a magazine from that synagogue in Zurich asking if anybody needed synagogue furniture and ritual objects. And so he got on a plane and he went to Zurich. He bought, packed up, shipped home all of the furniture from the synagogue basement in Zurich. And so now when you walk into our Colleen Chapel, this is what it looks like. And you see directly in front of you the ark, that's where the Torahs are, are stored. Right above it is a set of Ten Commandments. There's a parapet above that. On your left, you see a Torah stand. It's green, and right next to it is a chair, a wooden chair called the Stender that has a table on it. And in the back of the room, there are more Stenders. There's a candelabra and a chandelier. Those nine pieces of furniture came back to Denver. And as they were being restored, and installed into our chapel, Rabbi Foster had a thought. And he said, I wonder if there is a Torah from the city of Colleen as well. And so he called the Westminster, Westminster Synagogue in London, where 1,564 Torahs were sent in varying states of destruction and disrepair after World War II to be restored and to be placed in communities. It turned out there were three from Colleen that had been sent to the Westminster Synagogue. Two had already been placed in other communities. One was left. And so you see here, as we open the doors of our ark, there are three Torahs. The one on the far right has a map going from Colleen in Czechoslovakia to Denver in the United States. It makes a pit stop in London. Because in 1942, this Torah that you see was taken out of this ark in Colleen in a country called Czechoslovakia. And in 1988, we put this exact same Torah back in the exact same ark in Denver, Colorado, because that is what we do. Whatever we need to, to preserve our tradition, to teach our children the lessons of our people. And it's exactly what we are doing today. We are passing this beautiful tradition down from one generation to the next. And so as we see in just a moment, Aiden and his family pop up onto our screen. Instead of passing down a physical Torah today, we are going to pass down instead a blessing a blessing of generations, a blessing that we give to Aiden on behalf of those generations that have preserved our tradition for so 
many generations and centuries and decades. And so I'm going to call to the screen Arnold Deutschman and Sherry Zox, who are Aiden's aunt and uncle. I'm going to call Brenna Deutschman, Aiden's sister. I'm going to call Mark Deutschman, his father, and Deb Seymour, his mom, to pass down to Aiden today this blessing of the generations. Arnie, go ahead. Aiden, our hearts are one on this joyous day as you commit yourself to a life of Torah, a life we pray filled with wisdom, caring, and right action. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, bless you on your becoming a bar mitzvah. We pray that you will grow each day in compassion for the needy, in concern for the stranger, in love of all people. May you grow with strength and courage, with vision and sensitivity. And may you always be certain of our love. We wish for you to be a person of character, strong but not tough, gentle but not weak. We wish for you to be righteous but not self-righteous, honest but not unforgiving. Wherever you journey, may your steps be firm and may you walk in just paths and not be afraid. Wherever you speak, may your words be words of wisdom and friendship. May your hands build and your heart preserve what is good and beautiful in the world. May the voices of the generations of our people move through you and may the God of our ancestors be your God as well. May you know that there is a people rich a rich heritage to which you belong, and from that sacred place, you are connected to all who dwell on earth. May, may the stories, stories of our people be upon your heart, and, and may, may the grace of the Torah rhythm, rhythm dance, dance in, in your soul. We are gifts, and we are blessings. We are history in song. We are hope, and we are healing, we are learning to be strong. We are words, and we are stories, we are pictures of the past. We are carriers of wisdom, not the first and not the last. Dor vador, nagid god lacha. The door vador, we protect this chain from generation to generation. The door vador, these lips will praise your Beautiful. Thank you. And as we prepare now with that blessing in our minds and our hearts for Aiden to read from the Torah for us, to teach us about the Torah, before we do that, I want to take an opportunity to tell you a little bit about the Torah and our Torah scrolls. I don't know so many of you. I can't even see you today. So I have no idea whether you have looked at a Torah, seen one, um, been able to interact with a Torah scroll. And it's such a cool part of our tradition that we always make sure people know. So a Torah scroll is um, written. It is, it is the five books of Moses written on parchment with a quill and ink. And it's written by a sofer or a soferet, which is the Hebrew word for a very specially trained scribe who does really incredible calligraphy, which you see in front of you. And fascinatingly, it takes about a year and a half to write a single Torah scroll. And that is because there are 304,805 letters in the Torah, and every single one of them has to be exactly perfect a lot of pressure. So what happens to a poor scribe if they are in the middle of writing a Torah or God forbid at the end of writing a Torah scroll and something gets messed up, there's a mistake, there's a smudge, they write a letter wrong? I'll tell you. If the ink is still wet, they take a razor blade because it's written on animal skin and they just scrape it right off. However, 
Two possibilities make that not the answer. One is if the ink is already dry, you can't really scrape it off. And the second is if the mistake that is made is in a word that contains the name of God. We wouldn't want to desecrate that. And so if that happened, we would take out that section of parchment and we would bury it in a Geniza in a Jewish cemetery. That's what we do with our holy documents, our sacred documents, when we can no longer use them. Now that section that I'm talking about is called a cloth and every section in the Torah is sewn together with sinew from the same animal probably or a similar animal but that parchment is taken from and it contains about six columns of text so it's not so bad if a scribe makes a mistake they don't have to go back too far. Now what you see in front of you I'll tell you just a few more things about it. You might notice something that's added and something that's missing if you've ever looked at Hebrew text in a prayer book before or even in a book that contains the words of the Torah or the Bible. What you see added is the crowns that are on top of the letters. If you look closely right above that finger that's pointing, you'll see coming out of the letters, these little lines and decorations. And you might also notice, like if you look up at the top of this picture, you'll see that some of the letters are stretched out really wide. Now, some of our most mystical um, sages say that there is what to be read into those decorations and those stretched out letters that they have deep mystical secret meanings that we have to identify. Others might say that they are just for beautification and that those stretched out letters are perhaps because uh, you can't justify your margins quite as easily as you can if you were working, say, in, I don't know, Word. Uh, so they help to make the column edges even. Now, what you see missing are cantillation marks and vowels. Hebrew has only consonants in uh, its selection of letters in the alphabet, and the vowels are added by dots, lines, and symbols that are um, added after the fact. We take them out along with the musical notes called cantillation marks of the Torah because it is super fun for us to torture our bar and bat mitzvah students while they're learning how to read from the Torah. Just kidding. That's not why they're not there, though it's a fun joke to make every time. Uh, they're not, they were never in the Torah. The Torah predated those marks, both the cantillation marks, the trope is what we call them, and the vowels. We don't include them because they were never there. The Torah came before most people were literate. They didn't know how to read. So we had a representative from the community who did know how to read, who didn't need those helping hands, who um, could read without them and who knew what the Torah said and read publicly in front of everyone else. That's where this custom comes from. And later, when more people began to learn to read uh, and it became something that the common person could do, those helping hands were added with the advent of the printing press and things like that. Now, one final thing, what you see in front of you is the text and it is a finger pointing just like this. We, our hands are dirty and funky all the time and that text is so precious. It is not treated with anything, the ink on that parchment. And so we don't touch the inside of a Torah. We use this yad, that means hand, and it looks like exactly what it is. It's a finger pointer that keeps our hands from um, disrupting what is on the parchment itself. That way we don't smudge or get the parchment dirty so it lasts as long as possible. So with all of that now, it is such a cool honor to call Aiden to tell us about his Torah portion. He has learned to read from this Torah and he is going to tell us about what he is going to read today. The Torah portion for this Shabbat is Shemot, the first portion in the book of Exodus. Much time has passed since the death of Joseph at the end of Genesis, and we've learned that a new pharaoh has arisen in Egypt who did not know Joseph. The Israelites had multiplied greatly, and in fear, Pharaoh had enslaved them. We meet Moses and learn about his early life and how he had to flee Egypt after killing an Egyptian taskmaster who was beating a Hebrew slave. Decades later, Moses is shepherding his father-in-law Jethro's flock of sheep in the Sinai wilderness, when God speaks to him from a bush that is burning but is not consumed. I will be reading from chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. And as Aiden prepares to read now, uh, I just told you that we have this tradition that people used to read the Torah for us because um, it, was a, uh, it was something that not everybody knew how to do. And so we have evolved this beautiful tradition where we have someone who reads from the Torah 
and someone who blesses the Torah. And it's a great honor that we give to say the blessing over the Torah reading. We call it an aliyah, and that means to go up. And if we were in a synagogue, you might walk up the stairs onto a bima, the platform from which we read the Torah, but it's also a spiritual elevation that we call those that we want to give honor to, to participate in as we read together from the Torah. So for our first Aliyah, I am so honored to bring to the screen Brenna Deutschman, Aiden's sister, to say the first blessing. Baruch Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Umoshe Hayaro etzon yitro chotno kohen midian vaim chag et hatzon achar hamid bar vayavo el har ha elohim choreva vayera malach adonai elav belabat esh mitoch hasne vayar Vehine hasne boer baesh vehasne e nenu uchal vayomer moshe asurana vere et hamare hagadol haze medua loivar hasne vayar adonai kisar lirot vaikra e love elohim mitoch hasne Vayomer Moshe, Moshe, Vayomer Hineni. Now Moses, tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, drove the flock into the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. An angel of the Eternal appeared to him in a blazing fire out of a bush. He gazed, and there was a bush, all aflame, yet the bush was not consumed. Moses said, I must turn aside to look at this marvelous sight. Why doesn't the bush burn up? When the Eternal saw that he had turned aside to look, God called to him from out of the bush, Moses, Moses, he answered, Here I am. <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha-Torah. Amen. Amen. Mazel tov. That was beautiful, Aiden. You are doing a fabulous job. For our second aliyah, we are going to call to the screen Uncle Arnold Deutschman and Aunt Sherry Zox to say the blessing over our second aliyah. Adonai hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amin Binatan Le'olamanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vayomer al Tikrav Halom. Shal na'alecha me'al raglecha ki hamakom. Asher ata omed alav admat kodesh hu. Vayomer anochi elohe avicha elohe avraham elohe yitzchak ve elohe yaakov. Vayaster moshe panav. Ki are mehabit el haelohim. Vayomer Adonai rao raiti. Et oni ami asher bamitzraim. Ve etza akatam shamati mi pne noxav. Ki adati et machovav. Va e re la hatzilo. Mi ad mitzraim. Ul haaloto. Min ha'aretz ha'hi, el eretz tova or chava, 
El Eretz Zavat Chalav Udvash El Makom Haknaani Vehahiti Veha Emori Veha Prizi Veha Chivi Veha Yevusi And God said, Do not come closer. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy ground. And continued, I'm the God of your father's house, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. And the Eternal continued, I have marked well the plight of my people in Egypt, and have heeded their outcry because of their taskmasters. Yes, I am mindful of their sufferings. I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians, and to bring them out of that land, to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the region of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Vehaye Olam Ata Beita Adonai Notain HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Arnie and Sherry, for our third Aliyah today. We squish into that screen right there. <laughs> uh, Mark and Deb, Anan's parents, who are going to say the blessing over the third Aliyah. Baruch et Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamin, Venatan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Ve'ata hine, za'akat b'nei Yisrael ba'a elai, ve'gam ra'iti el chalachatz, Asher mitraim lochatzim otam. Ve'ata lacha, ve'esh lachacha el paro. Ve'hotze et ami v'nei Yisrael mi mitraim. Vayomer Moshe el ha'elohim mi anochi ki ya'elech el paro. Ve'chi otzi et b'nei Yisrael mi mitraim. Vayomer ki ehye imach ve'alahine ki e anuchi shalach ticha behotziacha et ha'am mimitraim ta'avduz et ha'elohim el ha'har Now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. Moreover, I have seen how the Egyptians oppress them. Come, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, and you shall free my people, the Israelites, from Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Egypt and free the Israelites? And God said, I will be with you. That shall be your sign that it was I who sent you. And when you have freed the people from Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Tomet Met, Vechaye Olam Nata Betuchenu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein HaTorah. Amen. Amen. We have a tradition that we actually take a pause right now, partially so that Aiden can keep breathing. <laughs> Good job. Um, and have a drink of water and take a breath. But mostly we, we take a pause right now because this is really holy work that we're doing. It's amazing to watch and participate and, um, and be here for this. And so we have this beautiful tradition that we use this power, the beauty, the holiness right now, in order to say uh, a prayer for healing. And so we turn now to the Misha Beirach, to our prayer for healing. And as we do so, we have a tradition in our congregation that we're going to sing two verses. And in between those two verses, we'll pause. 
We'll read a list of those that we know in our congregation that are in need of healing. And we invite you to participate in this as well, to say out loud in your own homes any names of anyone that you wish healing for, to type them in on Facebook chat if that's where you are, so that we can hold them with you and pray for the healing of all together. Today we are praying for Zachary Hoffman, David Karner, David Lustig, Natalie Mosher, Jeff Cohn, David Goldenberg, Stuart Myers, Catherine Plus, Jean Silber, Scott Grant, Scott Englander, Stacey Hoffman, George Kadish, Ira Clare, Kristen Myers, Corey Franklin, Shanti Hazan, Robert Tucker, Jennifer Brynan, Lynn Pollitt, Lynn McLaughlin Cromart, Cynthia Friedland, Betsy Appel, Howard Rosenberg, Leonard Streer, Deborah Elena Koff, Cindy Levy, Michelle Zuckerman, Bobby Fuhrer, Alex Gusnovetsky, Brett Ogan, Norman Francis, Shirley Barton, Louis Karsh, Robin Huss, and Kathy Bragg. We invite you to add to that list anyone in your heart or mind that you are praying for this morning. And we say together, Baruch Ata Adonai Makor Harafua, blessed are you, Adonai, the source of all healing. Bless those in need of healing. With refua shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. All of that holiness, we return now to our final Aliyah. We bring Aiden and his family back on the screen. Now, before we do this, I have to tell you that we recognize, we talked all about the Aliyah to the Torah and the blessing, and and, uh, and Aiden's been reading for us um, from the Torah, all three of the previous Aliyahs. We actually recognize this moment of becoming Bar Mitzvah at this exact moment. We don't recognize it um, quite yet when Aiden leads us in prayer. It's not on his 13th birthday. It's not when he uh, reads from the Torah for the first time. It's not when he first puts on his talit, his prayer shawl. We recognize Bar Mitzvah at the moment when he says his own blessing over the Torah reading, when he is both the reader, the chanter of the Torah, and when he is uh, the, and he says the Aliyah as well. And so it is my great honor and privilege this morning to call to the Torah as a bar mitzvah for the very first time, Jesse Aiden Seymour Deutschman to bless and read from the Torah. Yamod Yaakov Aharon, 
Bain Moshe Elchanan Udevora Ha Bar Mitzvah Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim Venatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah Amen Vayomer Moshe El HaElohim Hine Anochi Va El Bene Israel Ve Amarti Lachem Elohe Avotechem Shalachani Alehem Ve Amruli Mashmo Ma Omar Alehem Va Yomer Elohim El Moshe Ehye Asher Ehye Va Yomer Anochi Elohe Kotomar, Livne Israel, Adonai, Shalachani Alehem, Vayomer, Od Elohim, El Moshe, Kotomar, El Bene Israel, Adonai, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Shalachani Alechem, Zeshemi Leolam, Vezezichri Ledor Dor. Moses said to God, When I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, Ehye Asher Ehye, continuing, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, Ehye sent me to you. And God said further to Moses, Thus shall you speak to the Israelites, the Eternal, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This shall be my name forever, this my appellation for all eternity. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher bachar banu mikol ha'amim, Venatan lanu et torato, Baruch ata Adonai, Notein ha-Torah. Amen. Simon Tov, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Simon Tov, Simon Tov, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Simon Tov, Simon Tov, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Simon Tov, Yeah, Hey Lanu, Yeah, Hey Lanu, Yeah, Hey Lanu, Ulecho Yisrael, Yeah, Hey Lanu, Yeah, Hey Lanu, Ulecho Yisrael, Yeah, Hey Lanu. Lanu yehei lanu, ulecho Yisrael. Yehei lanu yehei lanu, ulecho Yisrael. Aiden, mazel tov. Very, very nicely done. We are going to move out of our Torah service and into the reading of the Haft Torah. Now we're going to give um, Aiden another second to take a breath, drink some water, <laughs> stretch out his face as we transition from one section to another. Now it's a very interesting um, thing that happens in our tradition now. We read the Haft Torah, which sounds like I'm saying half Torah. I am not. Um, the Haftorah is a section from another part of the Hebrew Bible. We read from the Book of Prophets in the Haftorah reading. And some of our, uh, our tradition says that probably this tradition evolved um, in times like we talked about before, when things were not so easy for the Jewish people and when getting out a giant Torah scroll was a little bit conspicuous. And so we would, in fact, read from other books that we didn't have to have that giant scroll for. It made it a little bit easier to do, but also to preserve our tradition. There is one section of the Book of Prophets paired with each Torah portion uh, that happens in the weekly cycle. And I am going to call Aiden now to tell us about what he is going to read um, for his half Torah reading.
The Haf Torah for this Shabbat is from the book of Isaiah. Much as the Torah portion describes, the Israelites' enslavement in Egypt and the deliverance that God will bring. The Haf Torah describes Israel's misfortunes and expresses hope that salvation will eventually come. I will be chanting from chapter 8, chapter 28, verse 11, through chapter 29, verse 23. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Bein Vim Tovim Veratza Vedivrehem Hanemarim Be'emet Baruch Atadonai Chabocher Batorah Uv Moshe Avda Amo, Uv Yisrael Amo, Uvin Vieha Emet Vatzadek. Ki Bela Age Safa, Uv Lachshon Echeret, Yedaber El Haam Hazah, Asher Amar Alehem. Tzot Hamnucha, Hani Hu Leayev. Vezot hamargea velo avu shmoa vehaya lachem devaradonai tzav la tzav tzav la tzav kav la kav kav la kav zeer sham zeer sham Lema an yelchu, vechashlu achor, venishbaru, venokshu, venil kadu, lachen, ko amar adonai, el beit yaakov, asher pada et avraham, lo ata yevosh yaakov, velo ata panav yechevaru, Ki viroto yeladav maase yadai bikirbo yikdishu shemi vehikdishu et kedosh yaakov vaata elohe yisrael yaaritzu. So the prophet must talk to this crowd with slow speech and simple words and say to them, here is rest, rest for the weary, repose is here. Still, they refuse to listen. To them, the word of the eternal will come, one command, then another, one line, then another, a little here, a little there. But instead of listening, they will march forward only to fall back, hurt. They will be snared and taken captive. The eternal, the one who saved Abraham therefore says to the house of Jacob, No more shall Jacob be put to shame. No more shall his face grow pale. For when his children see what I am doing in their midst, they shall hallow my name, hallowing the Holy One of Jacob and holding Israel's God in awe. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam, tzur kol halamim, tzadik b'chol chadero, ha'el ha'neeman, ha'omer ve'oseh, hamdaber umkayim, shekol devarav emet v'tzedek, al ha'torah ve'al ha'vodah ve'al ha'nivi'im ve'al yom ha'shabbat hazeh, shenatata lanu, Adonai Eloheinu, lik du shav limnu cha, lechavod ul tifaret. Al hakol, Adonai Eloheinu, anachnu modim lach, umvarchim otach. Yit barach shimcha befi kol hai, tamid leolam vaed. Baruch ata Adonai. Baruch uvaruch shimo. Mekadesh HaShabbat. Amen. Beautifully done, Aiden. Guess what? You're done speaking Hebrew.
<laughs> We're so proud of you and how hard you have worked to learn all of this and how beautifully you have led us in prayer and in study this morning. We have one job left for you. And that is that at this moment, you are the expert in your Torah portion. You have spent so much time learning and studying and, and thinking about it. And so now we give you the opportunity and we get the blessing of hearing you share with us words that you have um, thought about your Torah portion, um, what it has to, to teach you and what therefore you would like to teach us. So I am honored to call Aiden uh, to give us his Devar Torah. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for attending my bar mitzvah. My parsha is called Shemot. It is from the book of Exodus. As you heard during the translation, the parsha talks about God calling upon Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Earlier in the story, Pharaoh was worried that the Israelites were becoming so numerous that if they chose to join Egypt's enemy in battle, the Pharaoh would be overthrown. So Pharaoh told all the midwives to kill all male Israelite babies to mitigate this risk. The midwives didn't obey Pharaoh's orders because they feared God. So when Pharaoh asked them why they didn't obey his command, they told him that by the time the midwives came to the Israelite women, they had already given birth. A son was born to a woman named Yocheved. When she saw how beautiful he was, she hid him for three months. When she could no longer hide him, she got a wicker basket and waterproofed it with sap and tar. She placed her child in the basket and set it afloat in the Nile. When the daughter of Pharaoh came down to the Nile to bathe, she saw the basket. She opened it and saw it was an infant boy crying. She took pity on him, made him her son, and named him Moses, meaning I drew him out of the water. After Moses grew up, he found out that he was born of an Israelite and he grew angry at Pharaoh for enslaving the Israelites. One day he reached his breaking point when he saw an Egyptian taskmaster beating an Israelite slave. He killed the taskmaster and Pharaoh took notice. Pharaoh wanted Moses to be captured for his crime, so Moses fled Egypt for Midian. Many years later, while herding sheep, he stumbled upon a burning bush that spoke to him saying, I will send you to Pharaoh and you shall free my people, the Israelites from Egypt. <clears throat> At first, Moses was reluctant and said, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and free the Israelites? God responded by saying, I will be with you. Moses was still unsure and said, When I come to the Israelites and say, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you. If they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say? And God responded saying, I am what I am. Ehyeh asher ehyeh. Moses then said, What if they don't believe me? God responded by telling Moses to cast his shepherd's rod on the ground. When he did, it became a snake. Then God told him to grab the snake by the tail. When he did, it turned back into a rod. Then God sh showed Moses a series of other miraculous acts to get the Israelites to believe him. Eventually, Moses accepted God's commands and went to his father-in-law Jethro to tell him that he would be leaving Midian for Egypt, to which Jethro responded, Go in peace. One of the themes that keeps coming up during this parsha is obedience. There are a number of places in this parsha where a character chooses to obey or disobey. Orders or rules that have been set. When the midwives were, instruction, were instructed by Pharaoh to kill all newborn Israelite boys, but don't. They were disobeying Pharaoh because they feared God. In doing so, they were putting themselves in harm's way and standing up for what they thought was right. When Moses reached his breaking point and killed an Egyptian taskmaster, he was both disobeying Pharaoh and committing a crime. But we also read about two examples of obedience. First is the case of the, te of the midwives. Based on their names, the midwives were most likely Israelites themselves. The Parsha says that the midwives feared God. But what does fear mean? Maimonides teaches us that fear of God is positive rather than negative. It is derived from a respect for God's great and wonderful actions and creations. The midwives undoubtedly recognized that newborn babies were one of God's amazing creations, and they obeyed God rather than Pharaoh. Second is the case of Moses, who finally obeyed God's command to return to Egypt to free the Israelite slaves. The decision for Moses to obey God wasn't easy. He made excuses five times, saying that he wasn't good with speech, 
and asking for proof he could give the Israelites so that they would believe him. But finally, he chose to listen to God. <clears throat> it seems to me that the question of obey or disobey in my parsha has a really complicated answer. In, sometimes in the parsha, I recognize that someone's obedience or disobedience is justified. But how do we know when is the time to obey and when is the time to disobey? How does one choose between obeying and disobeying? In my opinion, disobedience is justified if positive change comes from that disobedience. We, but we also know that this is not an easy answer. Because from Pharaoh's perspective, this was not positive change. Not everyone has the same opinion on what positive change can be. This is beginning to sound very familiar in the times that we're in. Governors and health officials have been urging us to protect ourselves and others from the COVID pandemic by taking precautions such as staying home and wearing masks. But some people think that such restrictions infringe on their personal rights. This struggle is very real for me today. Instead of us all gathering in our finer chapel today, we are all attending from our own homes to protect each other's health. Do I wish I could have a normal bar mitzvah? Yes. And am I making a sacrifice for the health and safety of my family and community? Also, yes. And is it worth it? Definitely. Does failing to protect yourself and others qualify as justified disobedience? I say no. No positive change can come from getting infected with COVID or infecting someone else. And it turns out that there are some unexpected positives to having a live streamed bar mitzvah. Some of my family and friends who live far away who may not have been able to attend if not for the live stream. Jewish values help guide our beliefs and actions. During my studies before my bar mitzvah, I learned about these values. A Jewish value that is very relevant in my life right now is the Jewish value Ushmar Tem et Nafshotechem. This value states that as a Jew, I have an obligation to protect my health and the health of my community. This value is more relevant now than ever. It was also relevant in the story of the midwives, when they refused to kill the Israelite babies, they were putting their own lives at risk to help others. This is exactly what our healthcare workers are doing right now. And the least we can do to help is comply with these restrictions to protect ourselves and others from the virus. I believe that if we are going to defeat this virus, we need to make positive change and make the whole world a kahila kadosha, a holy community. Today, I call upon you to create positive change in the world to help others in any way possible, and to create a holy community that works together to create positive change by doing your part, even when the pandemic is over, by helping to protect others' physical and mental health, by doing things not to solely benefit ourselves, but our society, and accepting all people because we are all created in the image of God. In fact, when Moses asks God's name, God responds by saying, Ehye, Asher, Ehye, which translates to to English as, I will be what I will be. This, translated to Mandarin Chinese, is 我会变成我自己, which, when translated back to English, means, I will become myself. We become ourselves by making decisions that, that are guided by our religious and personal principles. This is how we become who we want to be. I would like to thank my mom for helping me when I was having trouble and always reassuring me when I was doubtful of myself and for always giving me a push when I was just procrastinating my work. I would like to thank my dad for helping me with my, write my Devar Torah and playing guitar so beautifully earlier in the service. I would like to thank my big sister Brenna for empathizing with me when I was studying. And I would like to thank all the Temple Emmanuel clergy for working hard to keep services going despite the pandemic. And a special thanks to Rabbi Hyatt and Steve Brodsky for helping me polish my Torah reading and my Devar Torah. <clears throat> Thank you to my tutor, Stu Zeger, for teaching me my Aliyahs and Haf Torah, as well as teaching me fun facts about my portion and the Hebrew language. Thank you to our Parrot Blue for squawking at me when I say a Hebrew word wrong. And thank you to all the rest of my family for always being there. I will now conclude with a prayer of thanksgiving. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shechechianu V'Kiyamanu V'Higianu Lazman Hazel. Praise to you, Adonai our God, Sovereign of the Universe, for giving us life, for sustaining us, 
and for enabling us to reach this season. Amen. 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 Oh, Aiden. Yeah, give him big hugs. He Give him one for me too, please. <laughs> oh, Aiden. Such a wonderful teaching. You know, it seems like a thousand years ago that um, that we first looked at your Torah portion and I was so excited uh, that this is the Torah portion that falls on this week of you becoming a Bar Mitzvah because this Torah portion Shemot is such an incredible, amazing Torah portion and I know it's one that you will never forget. I talk to a lot of people and they say, oh, yeah, I, I had a bar mitzvah. I don't remember what my tour portion was. You will never forget that your tour portion was and the story of the burning bush. And it's, there's so much packed into this story. And you, you gave us a, a, a really amazing recap of all the things that happened from, you know, Moses as a baby in the river to uh, Moses uh, uh, killing a, a, a Hebrew, an Egyptian taskmaster, and having to run away, and then, and then the the highlight, the culmination, the big moment in this story, is when God appears to Moses in the burning bush. And there's, I mean, I could go on for a half an hour. There's so many aspects of this story that are so amazing, but I want to really focus on one little piece that you talked about in your Devar Torah, and that is that when Moses asks God, basically, who are you speaking to me from this burning bush? Who, who are you? And when I go to the Israelites, who do I say sent me? God answers, Ehye asher ehye, which can be translated in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it, it's, I am what I am, right? And, and there's so much implied there. Uh, because God is really indescribable. And a little bit later in our story, you know, God, Moses says, God, I, can I see your face? And God says, no, Moses, I can't show you my face. Because if I showed you my face, basically your head would explode. <laughs> I'm, I am so, uh, uh, you know, God is so powerful and so unknowable and some unfa so unfathomable to human beings that we can't know God. And so this this very vague, I am what I am response is so interesting. Other commentators translated, as you spoke about before, is that, that I will be what I will be. Or in another, another way to phrase it is that I am becoming what I am becoming. And I think that is such an Im 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 powerful and appropriate message for you today as you become a bar mitzvah. We talk a lot about the fact that you're not having a bar mitzvah. We're not giving you a bar mitzvah or making you a bar mitzvah. You are in the process of becoming a bar mitzvah and it's a lifelong process. You know, we talked about how the other day, a few days ago, when you actually turned 13, boom, the clock ticked down, ding, 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 mo uh, Aiden became a bar mitzvah technically today when you led us so beautifully in worship and bless the Torah for the first time uh, officially you became a bar mitzvah and we celebrated that moment but this is a lifelong pursuit to become a son of the commandments ehye asher ehye I will become what I will become I've known you Aiden since you were just a little kid right long time and um, through temple through junior choir through schwader camp through uh, so many uh, different ways um, it's been my honor and my privilege to to know you and your wonderful family and uh, you are becoming such an amazing young man and you've showed us today by leading the service really completely on your own by taking on the extra uh, burden of, of learning the songs uh, to play on guitar along with your dad, which is very, very cool. I, I love it. Um, you're going to put me out of a job, but, uh, but I love it. Um, and you are becoming uh, 
such uh, uh, an important and valued member of our community. And I know that as you go through, uh, as you move into your new status as an adult in the Jewish community, that you will continue to learn Torah, to teach us Torah, to uh, share with us all of your many, many gifts. Um, we got a little taste of your Mandarin, uh, which I know is a big, important part of your life and so impressive that, uh, that that's uh, a path that you have chosen to pursue. And um, just so impressed by your maturity, by your um, commitment to this process, by your dedication to learning your Torah and your Haftarah, and uh, um, for, for leading us so beautifully in worship this morning. So I, I want to thank you. And I'm so excited to have the opportunity as the years go by to continue to learn with you and grow with you and to see what you will become because we all have high hopes for you and we all uh, know that you're uh, going to become continue to grow into uh, an amazing and wonderful young man. So mazel tov. Um, we have a lot of gifts that we will be giving you when the time is appropriate. Uh, one of those gifts is a, a beautiful uh, bar mitzvah certificate. And uh, we have a slide of this certificate that I think we're going to put up. Um, here it comes. And it has on it the words of a blessing that we said earlier in our service, the, the words, La Asok Bidivre Torah. Uh, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, who commands us to engage with words of Torah. Not, and engage is a very deep word, not just to read words of Torah or to study words of Torah, but to wrestle with and struggle with and learn from and, and share. You know, one of the things in your um, Devar Torah that you talked about today was such a symbol of maturity is this idea that things are complicated, right? There are no easy answers. And, and one sign of maturity is to be able to hold two radically different ideas in your head at the same time and be okay with that, right? And, and to wrestle with those difficult concepts to words of Torah. And so this beautiful certificate will uh, commemorate the fact that you uh, led us in worship, read from the Torah today, uh, and became a bar mitzvah, accepting these uh, wonderful new privileges and responsibilities. We also will have for you a certificate uh, for a tree that we've planted in your honor in Israel, so that you'll always know that you have a connection to the land of Israel. And when you go there someday, you'll be able to go and visit your tree and water your tree. Shouldn't be too hard to find. We will have for you a wonderful um, uh, uh, little swag bag from uh, the Friedman Club Temple Youth Group with uh, a t-shirt and some stickers and uh, pens and pencils and all kinds of other goodies. Uh, we want you to know that you always have a home at Temple in our youth programs. Um, and in all and and in moving into confirmation and Gesher and all the other things that are to come for you. Uh, we have a book for you called Text Messages, not this kind of text message, but uh, the Torah kind of text message. Uh, and we know that you will continue to engage and wrestle with and study words of Torah throughout your life. We also have for you a, um, a book from uh, the clergy that will be signed by all, all four of us, Rabbi Black, Rabbi Hyatt, Cantor Sachs, and myself with a little personal message. Uh, congratulating you on this momentous occasion. And finally, uh, from our sisterhood, a Kiddush cup, and from our brotherhood, a mezuzah, uh, symbols of Jewish life uh, that you will be able to use for many years to come at many happy, what we hope will be many, many happy occasions. And again, on behalf of all the clergy and our entire congregation, uh, we're so proud of everything that you've accomplished. We're so proud of the person that you are becoming and uh, mazel tov. Uh, I want to invite now your mom and dad, Deb and Mark, to come on screen and to offer you their blessings. Okay. <sighs> Aiden, my son. 
We are filled with joy and pride as you reach this milestone in your life. This is a juncture in many ways. It's the boundary between childhood and young adulthood. It's the time when we as parents must pivot from directing your actions to hoping that you will ask for our guidance and advice. Most importantly, and according to Jewish tradition, the consequences of your actions are now your responsibility alone. We hope and pray, as do all parents, that you will make the best choices that will lead you to health, happiness, and success in whatever forms those words mean to you. When observing who you are now and who you are becoming, I think of your creativity, your empathy, and your gift for language. I also note your ability to deeply engage subjects that you are interested in and to avoid those you are not. <laughs> I hope that you will realize that virtually everything you can learn has the potential to be of value someday, even if its value seems unlikely at the time you are asked to study it. The Torah portion assigned to, to this time of year when your birthday occurs is indeed a profound one as you just taught us. Most of us will not be called to a task as monumental and as famous as the one that God called on Moses to fulfill. Yet we will all be called in some way to our life's work. As parents, we wonder what your calling will be. Will the creativity that prompts you to build rockets result in you inventing something that benefits humanity? Will your gift for language and theater lead you to be a great communicator a diplomat or a negotiator who, prom who promotes peace and understanding among individuals and nations of the earth. We have, all, we have all seen just this week how desperately that is needed. Will your skill in flying drones teach us to rise above our individual concerns and realize while looking from a higher viewpoint that until all of us is secure, nobody is secure? The Jewish value that you chose to teach us about in light of your Torah portion is Ushmartem et nafshotechem. You explained that this value refers to taking care of ourselves and of the larger community in which we live. You showed us that it relates to current events as it did in Moses' time. As you explained to us, it was definitely not within Moses' comfort zone to put himself in peril by returning to Egypt where he was a wanted man to free the Israelites from slavery. In fact, he argued with God, trying to get out of the responsibility, but he ended up following the calling. Whatever your calling is, I hope and pray that you will be able to recognize it, follow it, and find meaning and fulfillment in pursuing it. God was not very subtle with Moses, presenting him with a burning bush, which was pretty hard to ignore. Your calling is likely to arrive in a more subtle form and probably not all in one dramatic episode. As you grow into manhood and gain an increasing awareness and sensitivity to the world and individuals around you, I trust that you will be able to tune into those external cues and to those coming from within you to find your way. During your religious studies, you have learned about what lies within you and therefore also within every person. You have learned that we all have a little bit of God within us and that we come into this world pure and free to choose our own values and our own actions. Elohai neshama shinatata bi tahorahi. You also learned that God expects us to be in partnership to finish the act of creation by improving and repairing the world. Several times you heard our rabbis tell the story of the child who dreamt of a struggle between a good wolf and a bad wolf inside of him, wondering which one would win. You no doubt remember the answer. The one you feed is the one that wins. The good wolf, the good wolf is healthy within you. Keep feeding him and listen for the guidance the guidance of that little bit of God that lives within you. Some call it the still small voice. Listen for it in priority above the text messages, YouTubes, Instagrams, and chats and craziness around you. 
Those of, us, those of us here today have had our way paved by family who came before us. Only a couple of generations ago, some were escaping religious persecution for the same faith that we practice here today. Others were leaving, for, were leaving poverty for freedom and opportunity. Some, including your grandfather and great uncles, had to return to the lands their fathers had only recently escaped to defeat the perpetrators of the Holocaust. <laughs> they all would be very proud of you today, as are we. Your reading, chanting of your Torah and Haf Torah, and singing are beautiful as were your sisters before you. You devoted a huge amount of time and effort to this preparation during a very challenging year. For a large part of the year, you were stuck at home, attending school via, via computer, separated from your friends while your mom and I were also working by, by a computer. At the same time, you were learning two languages. We admire and thank you for that initiative and self-reliance of adding bar mitzvah preparation to your studies. We hope that you will continue to study and value your Jewish heritage. Your gifts are many, your talents are great, your opportunities are many, and your prospects are bright. Use them well. Thank you for being my son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Aiden, I'm sorry, I have to read this. Um, <laughs> Up. No, you can cry. But then I'm going to cry, and this will take long, and the day's passing by. So, Aiden, I'm so proud of you, who you are as a person, who you are becoming as a person, the work you've done to prepare for this very important and special day. And I know that Grammy, Patty, and Grandpa Billy, and all your uncles, and your Aunt Christy are all super proud of you, too. This is blown me away, quite frankly. Um, I'm proud of you, actually, for all the work you've done since you were four years old and began the process of learning Chinese in an immersion program. You arrived at that school speaking not one word of Chinese, and the staff and students there spoke only Chinese to you. Those first few months were really rough on you. Dad and I were concerned that we may have made a poor choice for your schooling but you embrace the experience and you learned and you keep learning. You're an amazing learner. That's what you did today. Well, for the past nine months. Language and communication with others seems to be one of the things that you were born to do and learning to read and speak Hebrew and lead parts of this service as you have done so amazingly, beautifully today is such a great gift and you've given that to the whole family and to Temple Emmanuel. But I'm not just proud of you. You are actually the miracle of my life. Your existence, your existence is the most recent addition of why I believe in God. It's because of the miracle of you. And this is not just because you were born when I was 44, but also, and far more importantly, because of who you are and the man that you are becoming. I never dreamed that if I had a kid, he would be so amazingly funny and smart and creative and curious to the point of making things happen with dry ice that I didn't know were possible. You are so smart and kind and such an empathetic person. You are truly a person I believe who will help the world, like dad said. And help the world to heal and become more peaceful and more loving and more able to embrace human differences as gifts rather than as threats. So I want to share an example of a time when, in my eyes, you became you. The story involves a helicopter, the medical school campus, and the Jewish values of Hesed and Rachamim which refer to the Jewish values of compassion and kindness. You've heard this story before. I think you may even remember that day. Um, and I feel that it really exemplifies 
a time when I saw you becoming you far beyond dad and I, or anyone else in the family for that matter. And it told me that God had placed inherent in you the values of chesed and rachamim. So it's a quick story, a very pivotal moment in my life where I knew um, who you were. And I knew that you were deeply connected with God in ways that had nothing to do with any human in your life. Okay, so we were at the medical school where unfortunately you spent a lot of time when you were a little guy waiting for dad and I to finish working. I think you were eight or nine years old and we were walking from building 500 over to Ed 1 and a helicopter came loudly flying overhead um, north to south to land on top of Children's Hospital. That Thanks. happens all the time there. They're really loud and I, um, I said to you, look, look, 80, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Do you see that helicopter? It's so low. Watch it land on Children's Hospital. And then 60 seconds after that, I'll never forget, you looked at me utterly aghast. Like, I can't even do the look. And you were really upset. And you said, Mom, don't you think we should be thinking about the kid on that helicopter and saying a prayer for them instead of talking about how cool the helicopter is? Remember that? <laughs> That, that was you. That was Aiden. What a moment for me. You thought of the child that you didn't know and you couldn't see in the helicopter who needed help. And I was all like, cool helicopter, dude. Like, in that moment, you showed me who you were and who you are and who you are becoming. A person who thought of someone else and their life, and someone who cares about others that are around you, even when you don't know them personally or anything about them. That's where your head went. Your Torah portion, uh, in your Torah portion, when God says, Ehyeh, Asher, Ehyeh, and you spoke the Chinese translation, I'm not even gonna try that one, um, translated into, I will become myself. When I first read your Devar Torah and we were having that conversation, this moment, I knew I didn't have to write this thing. It just came into my head because I knew that this story was what I wanted to tell you and have you know what I know. In that moment, you became yourself and you were a reflection of God in those words and actions. In other words, for me, by acting the values of chesed and rachamim, you constantly become you every day. I love you, the whole family loves you. You're the miracle of my life. And I'll always be there for you, even when you become more yourself than I can handle. I know because of that moment with the helicopter on campus that you're becoming someone who will shine light and project and give the values of the Jewish people. I think my own parents were scared of me becoming a teenager. And I think that's a pretty normal thing. But I'm not at all afraid of you becoming a teenager. I'm not worried about it at all because I know the parameters of who you are and who you are becoming. Dear, it sounds so trite. You're so amazing to me. I can't wait to see what the next 13 years will bring. You're growing up and becoming your own self. Every day, I thank God and dad for you and now I also thank you for being you and becoming a, the really incredible young man that you are I love you AD Shaway Jacob Aaron ciao ciao <laughs> etc you guys <laughs> oh my goodness it's a good thing that I come after the parents because I guarantee you Steve is sitting in his basement sobbing right now. It's one of my favorite parts of this is, is getting to hear what you have to say to your child and what this all means to you. So everybody, take a deep breath. Blow that nose. Yeah, get in there. Okay, so I want to tell you, first of all, you can leave yourself muted if you want for a few minutes. Um, I want to tell you that 
meeting with B'nai Mitzvah students, I get to know them and I ask you all these questions. And you're like, yeah, I speak Mandarin. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And, uh, and then I said, is there anything else that I should know about you? And you're like, um, I don't think so. And your dad sort of raised his hand and was like, he really likes to blow things up. <laughs> hmm, cool. This is really exciting. I appreciate that dad told me that and not you. And I worried a little bit just a little bit about uh, what what is my responsibility to hearing that, <laughs> that, you, that you like to blow things up and you like to do these science experiments. But what I have learned in the subsequent meetings with you is that um, of course you do, because you have a really cool curiosity about life and about learning and about information. Your Torah portion is called Shemot, it means names. And we have a tradition um, in the Midrash that we read that says every person has three names. The name that he is given by God, the name that his parents call him, and the name that he makes for himself. And it's a perfect tie-in with everything that everyone else has said today, that certainly right? You came pre-mixed, right? Everybody comes with some amount of personality that nobody else gets to influence. That's just a part of your DNA, right? That's the part that God gives you, that name. And then everybody uh, comes with the name that their parents give them. You don't have any say about that. You, Your parents decided what they wanted to name you in Hebrew and in English. And then you get to make a name for yourself. That's the becoming part that we're talking about. And when we think about why the Torah portion is called Shemot, it's because there's a lot of reasons. But one of them is that we are watching our greatest leader become himself in this Parsha. We're watching Moses figure out how to be a leader. And working with you on your Devar Torah, on your speech, we're thinking about with you how you were going to say these things words, how you were going to talk about obedience and disobedience and pushing back and fighting back, right? That is you learning how to interact with society, not just as a kid, but as a grown member of a country that needs help, that needs uh, your brain and your action. And what you had to say was really beautiful. And so we today got to watch you certainly become a person, but we also are watching you make a name for yourself, watching you create for yourself an identity that we know that uh, today is not going to be the be all end all of. And we can't wait as a clergy, as a congregation, and I'm certain that I speak on behalf of your family, we can't wait to see who you become, who you continue to become, and what name you make, what name you continue to make for yourself. I think we're going to hear a lot about you. I really believe that. And so with that, it is my honor to bring Steve back to the screen as we give you one final blessing. This is a blessing uh, that we, it comes from um, words of Torah. It's a blessing actually that God gives. And so on behalf of God, we bless you this morning. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Aiden, may God bless you and keep you safe. Yair Adonai panave lecha v'yichunecha And may the light of God shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may you see God's face. It means something different coming today on a Parsha where we were told that we don't get to see God's face, but I think that we do. I hope that you see God's face in the faces of your parents that love you so much in the face of your sister, in the face of your family and your friends, 
and the people around you who are invested in you. May you see God in them. And may all of that bring you the greatest gift of all, the gift that we wish for you more than anything, the gift of peace. We will begin to conclude our service as we join together in singing Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach la'adon ha'kol La'tet gedula li'otzer b'reshit Sh'lo asanu k'goye ha'ratzot Ve'lo samanu k'mishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkinu kahem Vigor aleinu Kechol hamonam Va'anachnu korim Umishtachavim umodim Lifnei melech malchei hamlachim Hakadosh baru We end every service that we do the same way, and that is with a moment of memory. When we talked about the chain of tradition earlier, we talked about how generations have passed down tradition. Aiden, your dad talked also about the power of the generations that came before you. And we think of all of those at this moment who helped us to be here, who brought us to this moment, for whom we are so grateful for the lives that they led and who we wish could be here celebrating with us today. And so we acknowledge and stand with all of you who are in moments of mourning, who have recently lost someone that you love, or who are remembering someone who passed away at this moment in a year uh, that came before. And on behalf of the family, um, of, the, of the Deutschman family today, we are also remembering uh, grandparents, Dr. Herbert and Molly Deutschman, grandmother Gail Johansson, and Aunt Cori Russ. And we ask you certainly to type in on Facebook or to say out loud the names of anyone else that you are remembering today as we join together now in the words of the mourners Kaddish. Yitgadal v'yitgarash shemei rabah. Beama di ra chirute viam lich mal chute. Bechaye chon uviome chon uchaye de chobe Yisrael. Ba agala uvisman kariv viumru. Amen. Yeheshme rabba mevorach leolam uleome amaya. Yit barach ve yishtabach ve yit paar ve yit romam ve yit nase. Ve yit hadar ve yit ale ve yit halal. Shemede kudesha brihu. Leila min kol birchata veshirata, tushbechata venechemata, da amiran ve alma vimru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, le chaim alenu ve al kol yisrael vimru, amen. O se shalom vimromav, hu ya ase shalom, alenu ve al kol yisrael vimru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us say, Amen. conclude our service let's uh, bring everybody back on we're
we're gonna celebrate a little bit together by singing Hava Nashir Hashir Hallelujah. Let us sing together a song of praise to God. Hava, Hava Nashir Hashir Hallelujah. Hashir Hallelujah. 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 Hava, Hava Nashir Hashir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashir Hashir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashir Hashir Hallelujah. Hashir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashir Hashir Hallelujah. Hashir Hallelujah. And we say one final prayer. Yehiratzon milfanecha. May it be your will, God, that we all learn from Aiden, not just today, but tomorrow and the next day. And as we go back into our lives from this celebration that we take with us the lessons that he has taught us, what it means to become someone, to be the most uh, real version of ourselves, but know that that version will continue to grow and change. May we learn from his beautiful chanting and praying and teaching today all the beauty that we needed in the world this Shabbat has certainly been bestowed upon us. And so we thank you, Aiden. We wish you a mazel tov and we pray our final words to God. Tatsi denu l'shalom. Let each of our steps be steps of peace. Tadri chenu l'shalom. We ask you, God, to guide us on paths of peace. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Mazel tov. And we'll see you all soon. Mazel tov.